Hey fellow tankers, Toaster here. Uh, I've got a replay for you, an Ace Tanker in the Panther M10. I just bought it. Uh, I really enjoy it. It is not the um, best tank in the world, but it's got preferential matchmaking and it's workable. It's got fearsome DPM at like 2400. It's got 150 pen and 135 alpha on it. So it's kind of basically a Cromwell gun, except that it is uh, extremely accurate, 0.3 accuracy. So it is a bit of a sniper. Um, you use your hit points in order to um, kill stuff in some cases towards the end of games. I'm platooned here with combat and effective and um, and it does have an okay turret. Uh, let's see here. The turret, if you look at the side of the turret, um, it's got a wedge shape basically, a triangle there. And so if you're poking ridges and you're backing off, there's oftentimes stuff will bounce off of this as you're backing back down the hill because the, the angle gets more oblique. Um, but and against lower tiers, it's got workable hull armor. If you're if you angle it, you know, 20, 30, 35 degrees somewhere in there, uh, it's German, so you can over angle a little bit and uh, increase your armor quite a bit. So uh, let's go ahead and get the replay started uh, because it's a fairly long game. But I thought that I would um, talk a little bit about the tank since it has not been on my channel yet. So. Um, it, I believe I said that it's preferential matchmaking, which is really nice when you're platooned because platoon matchmaking is brutal. And so um, I, it, it's a nice tank to play because you know you're not going to face anything higher than tier 8. So, so this map uh, I've talked about before, but it is very one-sided. The enemy team uh, on the south has a big advantage on this map because I call this area over here the donut. Um, might tell you something about me, but anyway, I call that the donut, and uh, the enemy has the advantage getting to donut, and because they have an advantage, then it kind of gives them middle as well. So tactically, it's a very tough map to play from this side uh, if the enemy team's any good. Fortunately, they're not that great. And so we're just sitting here trying to get a shot. There's two RDs, so I don't really want to get spotted in the open where I can get RD. Um, and you will say, see me. Yeah, I worked the same area for a while, but I relocate positions a little bit, and that's helpful. And then I'm also using a terrain to my advantage to try and keep people honest and uh, still avoid RD. So we're trying to back off that E25, and I asked Combat to go back on that back hill. If you see where he's positioned right now, you can get shots into the donut, which is fantastic, and you can also get shots uh, into, and you see him hitting that E25. So, so I get a little too aggressive here, and there's no way I'm going to bounce a uh, T29. So, but we are picking up some assist damage due to that. So it gets worse too if the enemy takes the uh, the hill. The hill is extremely important for us um, because if we don't take hill then guys like this this uh, T32 are just can just farm people with a, a impunity. So you can see the side of, of course it's an American tank that we're shooting at but the side is uh, easy enough to pen, and we do pen that shot, I believe. So that T32 is taken out, which is good because it's three to seven currently. <laughs> um, our two tanks on the on the top of the windmill there got really uh, hammered. So we're able to put a shot in the Dicker Max. And I don't know if that one hit or not, but we do see the uh, T-150, and unfortunately, I'm just a little bit too high. I should go down lower, quite honestly, because I lose a lot of health for no reason here. So Combat and I are talking, and um, he's... he's uh, 
he is I don't know if he's watching middle but he he might be watching uh, where the Oni is coming out he can also get shots on the top of the hill and I see this WZ and of course he immediately fires on him and I'm able to get a shot so we're just playing back and forth because that WZ has a fearsome gun and it's got really good frontal armor so really your only hope is to hit it in the side and Artie's helping us out a little bit so so now that WZ backed off I just want to poke up here and see what's coming uh, if anything is and it takes me a minute to notice that they've got an STRV and this guy does not play it very well in my opinion we're trying to stay hull down and uh, but we don't want to stay up there for one thing there's two arties for another thing there's that that uh, TD and I I do not want to get hit by that TD because I am basically a one shot for him so I don't know why he's not facing me but he's not and we're just trying to work the position we have we're kind of stuck here which is okay and combat decides to move and for some reason this STRV decides to go in the wide open where he's not supported by that tank destroyer so combat makes a small mistake and he's alive but he's stuck down the the cliff and so uh, he's told me that in team speak and I, we're laughing about it but this is a close game now we've pulled it back quite a ways and you notice I load a gold round because I need to I need to pin that lower plate of that uh, WZ GFT, and we're able to do that. So the IS-2 is pushing around. I think that's a poor idea um, because there's a T-28 HTC, and I know there's a Dicker Max over there somewhere. So. So we're just trying, we're going to let our binos come up and see if we can see anything over here. Unfortunately, we don't. Without binos, uh, I cannot get up to full view range. And I, the view range on this thing is quite important because it, does, it doesn't have a lot of armor. And if you can light stuff and pull back and double bush, it is. it has incredible DPM. I mean, it's it will tear things up and if you put two of them together I mean you can burn down tanks so fast that uh, that they you know even at 200 meters you can just about kill them so so we're just popping up here because uh, we see the E25 has lit the arty and as you know I do like to shoot at arty so we don't get lit there which is fantastic and that HTC, I should have put a shot into him there. The other thing about this tank is that just like most German tanks, it has, uh, you've got to fully aim if you want to shoot stuff. So the E25 has said that he's out of ammo and combat notices that and tells me in team speak because I was paying attention to this HTC and, uh, and so the E25 does a smart thing. He goes into cap because he's probably got a camo net and binos. And there is absolutely no chance of anybody spotting him until they get down fairly close, within 200 meters probably of the cap. And the only way to do that would be to come maybe around this side and put, set up binos. You might be able to see them, but my guess is even then, it's unless he's got an extremely skilled crew that HTC is not going to see him so what I'm doing all I'm trying to do at this point is keep that HTC in a position where he, where he cannot move forward because I don't want to lose the game and uh, I don't feel like an Oni with me having 356 health fighting an Oni and a T28 HTC is a bad idea and here I make a big mistake I mean look at that and I get very lucky one 
and two, even even if he'd hit me, it probably wouldn't have high rolled me enough to kill me. So, thank goodness. But still, that was a uh, too much tunnel vision. I'm just trying to protect this E25 though. So I just move into a position that I know that the the HTC I'll I'll hit him on the way in because we've got 10 seconds left. And um, we're just trying to get shots in. And uh, that would be the end of the game right there. So um, let's go to the after action report because our figures aren't quite right. We did hit some blind shots. So we'll see you there. Okay, here we are. This is uh, my first ace, of course, in this tank. Um, and we did... Uh, we hit quite a few tanks. You do have to fire a lot of shots, but luckily this carries a ton of ammo, and the ammo is inexpensive. So we ended up with uh, 2,149 damage. Uh, we showed 1,860 in the game, so we hit a few blind shots. We had 1,263 base XP. That E25, kudos to him, 2,700 damage. Holy smokes. Uh, and so we fired 36 shots, hit 26, pinned 17. Uh, we did uh, a little, we blocked 480 damage, which, you know, uh, okay, we would have died if hadn't blocked it. And 2100 damage to our assistants. So I think that was the key as we ended up with uh, 4200 combined. I um, bought a premium account for the three-day weekend and I also had a personal reserve going so we ended up with a hundred and twenty nine thousand credits in a tier 7 premium so that made uh, that's a pretty good game really and then we had uh, we ended up with 2300 uh, XP and 143 free experience so that's that's actually pretty good so um, I do have a couple more games that I'm going to show you guys uh, in my M10. I have another Ace and another uh, game that we uh, combat and I play together, and, and it's a platoon game, and it, it should be fun to watch, and maybe you can learn something for your platoons, or maybe you can teach me something. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we will catch you next time. As always, uh, like buttons down there. If you'd like to subscribe, you're w welcome to subscribe. Dislike button is, of course, uh, right next to the like button. We'll see you next time.